viewers get to fly around SpaceX's giant Starship rocket in the stunning drone video that has been released recently. Stay tuned as we bring you everything that we know. First, we have the drone video. A breathtaking drone video from SpaceX shows the firm dismantling the completely stacked Starship that will be sent into orbit later this year. The waterside image, which was taken on Twitter on Saturday, February 19th, shows the massive Starship rocket on a crane next to the super heavy booster, which will try the company's maiden orbital voyage. That trip, however, is contingent on the outcome of a long-awaited Federal Aviation Administration the FAA, examination of Starship's facility near Boca Chica, Texas. The already postponed evaluation has been pushed out until at least March 28th, citing the need for further consultations and more time to analyze public submissions related to the environmental assessment. The massive apparatus was destacked on February 14th. SpaceX has put Starship atop Super Heavy on a regular basis for fit tests and other operations. The rocket, when completely assembled, is the highest ever manufactured. Starship also has a major NASA contract to carry men to the moon for the Artemis program, and it was recently designated to potentially launch one of the three newly announced Polaris program trips into orbit. The Polaris Initiative is a private space program funded by billionaire Jared Isaacman, commander of the all-civilian Inspiration4 spacecraft that launched in 2021. Next, Community on Mars. Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, provided a key update on the Starship program on February 10th, reinforcing Musk's long-held desire to create a Mars community. He informed viewers that he is very sure that the Starship will enter orbit this year and that the system will be capable of traveling to Mars in the following years. The selling point for traveling to Mars is that it will be a crowded, hazardous, tough, and really challenging job. Musk warned in his lecture that you may die. That is his sales pitch, and he sincerely hopes you enjoy it. Up next, the Florida Starship Factor. In what is likely a foreshadowing of things to come for SpaceX's embryonic Florida Starship factory, the company's initial Starbase facility in South Texas may be transitioning from tents to more permanent structures. In late 2019, SpaceX followed in Tesla's footsteps and began constructing a shockingly complex factory out of a series of tents more than two years ago. SpaceX would be producing and assembling pieces of the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built, rather than Model 3s. Starship is a completely reusable rocket that is around 120 meters or 390 feet tall, 9 meters or 30 feet broad, 5,000 tons or 11 million pounds fully fueled, and capable of delivering roughly 7,500 tons or 16.5 million pounds of thrust during liftoff. Now, let's talk about the complex production process. Instead of relying significantly on horizontal integration, which means that the rockets are mostly produced in a horizontal configuration, Starship and its super heavy booster are nearly entirely assembled vertically. Except for the machining of important load-bearing structures, Starship production typically begins with mass of coils of thin stainless steel, around 3 or 4 millimeters or 0.15 inches. SpaceX unspools the sheet of metal using a unique coil, cuts a 28 meter or 92 foot long strip, and then welds the ends of that strip together to form a cylindrical barrel. If you repeat that process 57 times, you'll have enough rings to create a whole super heavy booster and most of a starship. SpaceX stacks and welds those individual rings together to produce portions of 2, 3, 4, or 5, using more sophisticated equipment. Each part is then outfitted with a variety of cut cutouts, piping, reinforcements, which can be vertical stringers or circumferential stiffeners, thrust structures, the plates that Raptor engines attach to, and other add-ons to ready it for its unique duty. Most crucially, certain ring stacks are linked with huge steel domes that are welded together from prefabricated steel plates to form front, common, and aft dome portions. SpaceX constructs the ship's conical nose piece in a similar fashion for Starship. Next, Starship setting records. SpaceX's completely reusable Starship, which is set to make its first orbital flight this year will most likely cost a fraction of the price of NASA's in-development SLS rocket. NASA estimates that an SLS trip will cost around $2 billion per launch, but SpaceX CEO Elon Musk stated in a recent presentation that a Starship voyage may cost as little as $1 million. Not only that, but Starship will most likely be the first rocket capable of traveling to the moon, Mars, and back. According to one major Washington space lobbyist who wished to remain unnamed, SpaceX's competitors are afraid of Starship's ability to break new ground at a cheaper cost. Once operational, Starship will be capable of launching 300,000 pounds into low Earth orbit, or LEO, with the maiden orbital launch scheduled for early 2022, maybe as early as next month. But what are SpaceX's competitors working on, and how do their efforts stack up against Starship? Is it true that they are that far behind? Now, in other SpaceX news. NASA authorized SpaceX for three additional flights. NASA ordered three additional commercial human trips to the International Space Station from SpaceX on February 28th for a total cost of more than $7 billion. NASA has formally announced a change to its current Commercial Crew Transportation Capability, or C-17, 
ACT CAP contract with SpaceX. The update adds three flights to the six operational or post-certification trips to the International Space Station covered by the original contract, which was granted in 2014. The NASA release did not specify the value of the contract change, simply that the overall value of the deal had increased to $3.49 billion. According to a government contract database, NASA authorized a $776 million contract amendment for the three flights on February 28th. NASA spokesman Josh Finch verified the amount on March 3rd, stressing that it encompasses ground, launch, in-orbit, return, and recovery operations and cargo transportation for each mission, as well as a lifeboat capability when connected to the International Space Station. Assuming that each of the three extra flights will transport four astronauts, as past post-certification missions did, the contract upgrade will cost $64.7 million per seat. While NASA has not previously released per-seat rates for commercial crew flights, the Office of Inspector General OIG, projected in a November 2019 report that SpaceX's first CCT cap contract would cost $55 million per seat. This 17.6% rise corresponds to the rate of inflation between 2014 and 2022. Next, Musk mocks Russian space agency. The CEO of SpaceX has openly said that he's assisting Ukraine in keeping the internet up and running in the troubled country. Elon Musk ridiculed Russia after the nation said that it will cease supplying rocket engines to the US in retaliation for sanctions imposed on it for invading Ukraine. Musk mocked Dmitry Rogozin, the head of Russia's official space agency, for implying that the United States would have to go into space on broomsticks. Musk mocked on Twitter when he shared a video of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket putting another 47 Starlink satellites into orbit, calling them American broomsticks. Musk appears to have enraged Russia's authorities by activating the SpaceX satellite internet system over Ukraine in response to a request from the struggling country's administration. The entrepreneur has also openly advised Ukraine on how to keep connected to the internet amid the Russian invasion. Starlink satellites may be targeted. Elon Musk warned earlier this week that his Starlink may be targeted in Ukraine, which Russia invaded last week. Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, stated on Saturday that some nations, but not Ukraine, have directed the company's Starlink satellite internet service to restrict Russian news sites. We will not do so until at gunpoint. Sorry to be a free speech absolutist, he added in a tweet. Musk also stated that SpaceX has reprioritized cybersecurity and signal jamming, which would cause modest delays in Starship and Starlink V2. Earlier this week, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk warned that his company's Starlink satellite may be targeted in Ukraine, which Russia invaded last week. Lastly, Ukrainian engineer tests SpaceX's Starlink. On Monday night, Oleg Kutkov set his SpaceX Starlink dish outside his window in Kiev, Ukraine, in between the hourly air raid sirens. To his surprise, he received a signal from one of SpaceX's satellites overhead in about 10 seconds, indicating that he was receiving broadband internet. He says he released an essay on his reverse engineering attempts in late 2021, which led to some contacts within SpaceX. He had also attempted to change the address on his account from a US address to his own in Ukraine, but SpaceX support informed him that his location was not supported. Kukov paid for the account, nevertheless, to keep the service running for his tests and, just in case, he added in a Twitter post. When Musk reacted to Fedorov's tweet by stating that the Starlink service was now operational in Ukraine, Kukov decided to give his account another attempt. He attempted to link his dish to his account, but the endeavor initially failed. However, Kukov claims that SpaceX support contacted him and informed him that his account should now be connected. On Monday night, shortly after Fedorov tweeted an image of a truckload of Starlink dishes arriving in Ukraine, Kukov placed his dish outside his window to demonstrate that the service was operational. He tweeted a few screenshots of his download speeds, claiming to be able to attain a high speed of more than 200 megabytes per second. SpaceX now roughly has 2,000 operating Starlink satellites in orbit, with a few orbiting above Ukraine at any given time. Furthermore, an unauthorized map of Starlink's infrastructure suggests that there are gateways in a few bordering nations of Ukraine, which should assist keeping the satellites linked. That's a wrap for this video. See you in the next one.